Hi, baby girl. Hey, hey. Mama. welcome Mama. to Trusty Hogs, episode 58. 58. Hi, hi. We have so much to tell each other. Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah, you're going to give them your problems and they will solve them. Or maybe they won't. And that's your problem. They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech. As the trusty hogs trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. I feel like I've been through more, but I feel like you think you've got a lot to say as well. Okay, well, I don't know what we're gonna do. Listen, I think you've been through more. I think that, that, but I have some parish announcements, and I know you hate those. What can we do them? I'll sit tight. Oh my god, tight. Parish announcement number one. Um, What? Hang on. No, wait, you're doing a parish announcement. How is that you sitting tight? Okay. First of all, I want to say hello and welcome to Trusty Hugs. This is a podcast where we tell you about our perfect lives and then we listen to your problems about your less than perfect lives and we help you solve them. You're welcome. Now, before we get to parish announcements, yes. big news is we've just put an entire episode out for patrons and it is incredible. <laughs> or are we dropping it soon, Andrew? What's happening? Uh, it'll be out this week. This week, the patrons are getting an episode. An entire episode. We, I will say, is the best thing I think we've ever recorded. Yeah. So we did a big mailbag episode where we listened. We got, went back to all of your listener problems and tried to solve as many of them as we mm-hmm. could in an hour or so. Mm-hmm. I will say it was meant to be an actual episode of the podcast, but then um, Andrew and M described it as uneditable. Um, <laughs> Too so- personally <laughs> revealing. So it has to just go for the patrons. There is a um, discovery about my body that I'm genuinely. If you. Met me on tour i told you about this episode it was astonishing that you did not know this about your own body i still don't i know that you don't have have it you do you do oh my god i do not have it helen yes i know you say i do but like every woman does then go up there and find it yourself (laughs) because that is the only way we'll solve it Okay. Anyway, patrons, please enjoy um, the journey of the body. And if you're not a patron, I would say there are 56 extra episodes on there, 57 extra episodes, plus the mailbag. That's 58 episodes. Guys, just get on there. You can listen to all the all extra episodes where we put basically all of our filthy secrets. And I know For that's... For £5 a month! It's such a good deal. And there's so many benefits. Anyway, let's talk Don't about... Don't buy tulips. Buy trusty hogs. Yeah, or just like stop with or all the coffee coffins. or a beer. Stop. You can make but coffee at home. We're not in your home. You're welcome. <laughs> how about you don't buy that cress egg that you buy every month with the head with the eyes on it that has cress growing out the top of it? What? Leave that for what? November. Buy Trusty Hot. <laughs> the classic November. Have you practice. ever met a person? <laughs> I'm worried that I haven't. I we I really have. I feel like when you're on tour, this happens though. Where like the first people you speak to are 200 people in a room all day, and then you 200. <laughs> okay, we tour differently. Okay, we tour differently. <laughs> 75 people, people in a room. room. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, um, welcome to Trusty Hogs. Here's the deal. Parish announcement announcement number one. That have- wasn't one. Parish announcement number one. You're going to like this, Helen, if you'd ever let me get it out. I have an apology to make to you. Last time... Do you guys know what this is? Does anyone at home know? Okay, we're going. The person, one person at home knows what it is. Okay. So. Oh my God. As you know, I went to uh, Creamtown, a.k.a. Butch Place. Yes. And I said on this podcast to you that you would not be welcome there when you offered to come and stand in the smoking area yes. and roll cigarettes for the yes, butch. Yes, yes. As a service. Because I felt like that was inappropriate, appropriative, and ultimately not your space. Also, you take up a lot of space, baby girl. But just You're a loud woman. Area, I know. I know. So I was like, no, area. no, no, that's not for you. Oh, no. So then I go to Butch Please, and I feel like a princess, and it's wonderful. Yeah. So I'm in Selfridges with my little brother, who's in London. So we went to the Christmas section. I love him. Yes, we went to the Christmas section, as uh, all tourists should. Phenomenal. It really got me in the mood. And um, I... Oh, no, I thought it was good. Is there there's gift? no gift okay. for you. Well, that's interesting that you should say that because the reason this person got my attention was this person goes to me, have you bought something for Helen? And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> like a random person in Selfridges? No, so a person who knows my girlfriend, yes. who I was with also, was like, did you get something for Helen? And I was like, oh, you listen to our podcast? And they were like, yeah, did you get something for Helen? And I was like, no, what's happening? And they were like, by the way, can I just tell you something and I was like okay and they were like sometimes butchers want to feel like princesses too and personally I can think of nothing that would make us feel better than more than Helen Barra standing in the smoking area rolling us cigarettes oh my god I knew 
I would be welcome. <laughs> so shout out to Shiv. Um, Hi, Shiv. Thank you so much for saying that. And I will be there at the next one. And I won't go inside. I will try and... <laughs> I will try and like moderate my voice, but I'll be rolling, rolling, rolling. I'll be like, there you go. You're a princess. You're an angel. You're an angel. She's going to start the queue so that if you want to arrive fashionably late, the queue will already be formed for the Helen Bauer experience. <laughs> but is the experience just but here's the, a ziggy, here's a lighter. No, because then... Go scissor inside. No, because then my girlfriend was like... <laughs> Also, you could be rolling the cigarettes and doing the dumping the tits on the head thing that you do. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Let's not say I do that. Because <laughs> I've had a couple of um, tour dates where someone afterwards has been like, can you drop your tit on my head? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, legally, probably not. <laughs> like, it's not for men. It's only for tiny lesbians. It's only for tiny lesbians and only when Catherine's there because it makes her clap and cheer. It does. You I really, really love it. It makes me so happy. all the things I do <laughs> that make you recoil, I you light up when I'm in a space and you're like, do the chair thing! Do the chair thing! And Catherine's just in the corner, puts on her espresso martini, like, they dropped on my head fast! It really is a skill set that I don't possess and therefore adore. I think you admire it. I really do adore it. Oh, I do adore it. It's so fun to watch. Thank you for my watch. apology. So, you're welcome. So shout out to Shiv. Um, Shiv also, um, I think I referred to them as a lesbian and then they corrected me, which is so fair because uh, they're non-binary. And then I was like, I won't mention that to Helen because Helen will say something inappropriate. No, I won't. Hi, Shiv. What's happening? I cannot wait to roll you a cigarette. Okay, great. That's Parish Announcement number one. It was good, one. wasn't it? Okay, that was fun. Um, it was fun. The, the Christmas Parish gift. Parish Announcement number, number two. two. What do you mean Christmas gift? Oh, I You didn't... were in Selfridges, the Christmas area, and you I were didn't reminded. buy you anything. I can't stress that enough. Okay, Shiv, you can go fuck yourself. How about that? No, Shiv told me to have asked if I'd bought you something. I know, but then didn't follow through with it to Look, chase you up on it. No, I didn't buy so you I anything. I got a gifty. Okay, I mean, so... it's not from me, but... So parish announcement number two is that Helen sprained her ankle. Oh, I get Twice. Twice. Now, this I'm very mad Twice. about because why did you sprain it the second time, Helen? I went out drinking. Helen, re-spraining a sprain because you went out drinking is really fucking irresponsible. It's so really too irresponsible. is everything about how you first sprained your ankle, which is to say... I get a message from Helen being like, hey, just in case you see it on Twitter, I've sprained my ankle. Do you don't see don't it? worry about it. It's I've okay. As if I can't see it from here, it's huge. You have to help me put my shoe back on afterwards, though. Oh no, don't do this. <laughs> I've done what? It. She was trying to take off her, her shoe her, and she made okay. a real painful Look face. At the <gasps> oh my god, Can it's ginormous. It? Oh, it's all yellow and green, Helen. Yellow and green. Oh, my baby How do girl. I do it? Okay, just but believe me, it's huge. It is huge. And the truly. other one's so tiny. Yeah, it's like tiny. breakable. Em, come look at it. I need attention. I need attention, please. Thank you. Helen, but I do want to talk about this because I parish announcement number two, you're still really shit at going to hospital. I'm so, I went. Because I forced you to. I went. Yeah, I also really like Catherine screaming at Sinead. Right, Isn't basically, that really what bad? happened? Isn't that really bad? It's fucking massive it doesn't even like have, watch on like youtube so you can see her skin. swollen ankle it's so bad it looks like she's in her third trimester thank you go on thank you <laughs> that feels good um basically i did my I tech i mean she's glowing <laughs> i'm glowing. She's glowing. glowing um i did my tech for Zoe theater i thrived in it i did really well ow Helen, <laughs> i had to stand up and Helen, i had to shift back why are you stand why are you even and here then, and then and then um went home had dinny Okay, mm. was going back out to do Soho Theatre, put on my audio book that I Wait, was listening to. Wait, this all happened to. because you were too cheap to pay for dinner in Soho. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, my mum was having dinner in Soho. Oh, <laughs> you, there was nowhere oh, safe going, to go. Going, there was going, nowhere going. safe to go. Um, and then um, leaving the flat, I fell down the first step, one of three steps. No. And it just went like vroom. Wait, indoor or outdoor steps? Outside, outside. Okay, did you slip on something wet? And. No, literally just like misjudged step distance. Something weird happened. Oh my darling. Clearly I just like, just you know when you just like misstep and you roll on your ankle? I just rolled on it and I went like, Sunil was like, did you fall forward or backwards? And I was like, no, I went down like an oh, elevator. Darling. So I went, oh, <laughs> and then held onto a pole and went, oh no, <laughs> oh no. And you know when you're like sad even though you don't even know if there's any pain yet. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, it's fine. There'll be a bit of shock. I'll do the show and then I'll get back home later. I'll get on the bus now yeah. while the shock's still there. Did two steps and I was like, it's not going to happen. No. So I went back home, got in the flat and Sunil was just like, oh, what the fuck are you doing back here? I was trying like, to have a nice evening alone. It was just a chilly evening because he paid to have like the three hour version of Kingdom of Heaven to watch it or something. What? And I'm not allowed to be at home when he's watching films anymore because of the talking. So he came to see my show eventually on the Saturday and he left. Early home to go watch it. I know it's very complicated, very tense, 
very tense mode, my love. Um, but then, 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 Ow. I called my agent, texted you, yeah, which I think is the right order. Okay, I'm fine. And then my agent went, stop talking to me, call 111. And then you text saying, have you spoken to 111? Have you gone to the freaking <laughs> hospital? Have you gone to the hospital? And I hadn't, so I called 111 and they went, we've got you an appointment at the hospital at 9 p.m. And I was like, okay, I can do it. So the show got pulled and they were like, right, go to the hospital because my ankle was double the size by this point and I couldn't put any weight on it. So me and Sunil like hobbled down there and I managed to get me inside the A&E. Oh, my darling. And then they were like, Oh, no, no, no. Injuries are at 7 a.m. And I was like, what no, I have an appointment. Fuck? I have an appointment. And they were like, injuries are at 7. No. So we had to leave. But then the next morning I called you at 8.30. And I still... And had um, you gone to injuries? No, I was watching Markham in the middle. And were you going to go to injuries? Mm. No, you weren't. What did I have to do? I had to bribe you with a £20 gift. Yes. Which I will, will you have deliver. <laughs> I will deliver. <laughs> but I will also say that I think... It was shit that I had to bribe you and you should want to take care of yourself better than that. But I knew it wasn't broken. How but, I but, Andrew and I'm, you're going to freak out at this. Catherine already knows. But, um, so I went to hospital. They did do an x-ray on it just in case because they weren't quite sure. And I was like, I'm so, I, I didn't hear a crunch Medical a professionals were unsure, but Helen knew. She's got a vibe. Knew. She it's could just vibe body. it out. I could she tell. could just could vibe tell. it out. And then, so it was, it's a teaching hospital. Oh, hospital? Hospital? Hospital. <laughs> you okay? I don't know. It's a teaching hospital. So they put me on the x-ray machine and they x-rayed me and there was like two people learning and they were like, and what's that? What's that? And I kept hearing the word normal, normal. And I was like, oh, I'm normal as fuck. And then they um, were pointing at something else. And they went, what's that? And they went, oh, no, no. Like, oh, what's that? Oh, no. And they were muttering. And I was like, oh, shit, maybe I have fractured it. So I went back in the waiting area, waiting for the doctor to call me in. The same one where I got the doctor to tell Neil O'Rourke he needed to be my full-time carer. That the same one. doctor? Yeah, not the same doctor, same but the same wing. room. Same okay, room. yeah, yeah. Very exciting. Happy memories, happy memories. <laughs> and then um, got through and the doctor went, did your heel hurt? And I was like... Uh, no, it's my ankle, from my ankle. And she was like, no, 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 like, but in general, does your heel hurt? And I was like, um, I guess, sometimes. And she went, yeah, you've got an extra bone <laughs> growing out of your heel. What? And it's true, Google calcaneum spur. <laughs> Calcaneum and I have like spur. such a long one. It's like a talon, I'm like a dinosaur. Annoyingly, Heidi's wife did say it was common, so I don't feel very special right now. But mine is really big. Calcanium and the, 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 the hospital were like, you need to talk to your doctor about this. It's mine. I've got the one that grows out the bottom. Oh, it's very weird. Do you love it? Yeah. Is it I like know. a jealous? It, it kind of like hooks. It's like a little kind of like bone like hook. a dinosaur. Yeah. Yes, like, I've got like one. A, like the toe, like the back toe of a pterodactyl. Yes. Because yeah. I thought I'd hurt this foot before, but clearly it must have been the other one last time. Because mm -hmm. otherwise they would have been like, you've got a talent, you know? Because that's the sort of thing you tell people. You tell people. Gosh. She's and I can see it on the X-ray. She showed me. Comedian. Yeah. Are you jealous? Uh, I guess so. And then I did my show the other night and I was just like hopped up on painkillers. So I was a bit. What, did you do it sitting down, Helen? No, standy, standy. Helen. Um, and then the first night I did it, so the night after it happened, I forgot and um, I stamped my foot down really hard on the ground. Helen! Oh. But apparently the audience like completely forgot. I told them at the beginning for attention, but then like they no one knew. Perfect. But then the last night of Soho, I was like, okay, we'll just a couple of drinks. And then like, because I can now because it's the end and of Soho. And you reframed it. And then Soho Theatre closed. It was like 2.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. My friend Gwyneth came after Mockingbird to come hang out. Mm -hmm. And then um, there was like a little group of us, like me, Charlotte from my agency's office, someone else, we don't know if I want to be named, mm -hmm. but we were going to go to Freedom, some lesbian gay bar, no? Is that right? I'd never heard of it before. And we went away there, but there was a really big well, queue outside. if you outside. haven't heard of it, it mustn't be a famed lesbian bar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I thought I thought we'd all know between <laughs> us. No? No. And then I said, let's go to the speakeasy. Let's go to Trisha's. And as we were walking there, I rolled on my ankle and re-sprained it. And then there were no cabs, no taxis. Sunil Patel wasn't answering his phone. So Gwyneth Keyworth, who was about five foot two tall, had to act as a crutch all the way down Shaftesbury Avenue. And we were trying to find a taxi, couldn't find one. So I just got on the bus in the end. Oh, my darling. And then... By, and then that one's entirely your Can fault. Can I do one more win? That one's entirely, entirely no, your fault. No, it's not, poor Helen. I am going to tell you, I have a, uh, well, the reason I brought this up in Paris announcements is I was going to make an admission mm -hmm. that I think you'll really enjoy. You've got a £20 gift for me, but it's actually £40. No, I have a cheer you up story that I thought you would enjoy that you deserve because you've been to the hospital so much lately. I need it. And also because yesterday morning I ordered Domino's and then Sunil obviously had to get the door and then he took it to his room. <gasps> you brought it back though, yeah? 
after like a minute of me like actually screaming. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> like, really I angry. believe you. <laughs> really what not. What do you order? Um, large stuffed crust and chicken kickers. Yum. And he went straight to his room like, ha ha ha. And you know when you're like, I'm not in the mood. Nothing's funny right now. I'm not now. in the mood. This is not the one. You know. It... Well, I think you'll find this funny. Okay, okay. I'm ready okay. to laugh. I wasn't ready to tell this story at the time that it happened. I don't really know that I'm ready to tell it now. I'm telling it only for you. It's a gift to you because you've been to the hospital so much lately. You injured yourself. You didn't get it checked out. No. You forgot to wash your vagina. You left a tampon up there for no, a week. Will no, will you just listen okay. to the story? <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I was, in fact, at the hospital the night before my half marathon. <laughs> the actual story? The actual story. Because I've got a hunch. Oh, I think your hunch is right. I know my hunch is right. <laughs> Is it something to do with the tummy? Can you just listen? I'm listening. I don't want to. I don't want to tell it, but I'm just telling it for you because I feel like you need tearing up and you deserve it, and also because I'm worried our guests later will tell the story instead. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Helen, I had started dating someone new, <laughs> and we'd been dating for like what six, seven weeks. Yeah. So I, we were, we're lesbians. We'd seen each other too much. We were spending all our time mm -hmm, around mm -hmm, each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm a lady. I'm a lady who wants to be seen as a little dainty lady who wants to be seen sort of like a Barbie, like a, a like a robot lady, sex Move doll over. lady. Move Move over. Over. Yeah. over. And um, <laughs> when, uh, I couldn't go to the toilet. <laughs> You got backed up. You I, got real backed up, no? You gave yourself stomach problems. Helen, I couldn't go to the toilet or like, you know, like any of the other <laughs> stuff. For like mm, weeks, weeks, weeks. Her toilet is right beside the head of her bed. Isn't that illegal? That should be illegal. She has a, a toilet that's like right above the head of I her bed. I don't know why you're getting angry right now. Just go to the toilet. I can't. If when anyone doesn't him. know what we're talking about here, go back and listen to the Patreon episode of Jess Foster Q, the live show, um, where we talk about the plug poo and the poo that follows. <laughs> no, and you, no. Get an idea. That's not what I want you to I do. Think, I think it's important no. to listen to the plug and the, and the general. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't go to the toilet. No. <laughs> but that is dangerous. That's the thing. I know. And it was the most, I honest to God, thought, I, I thought my appendix was bursting. Yeah, I bet you fucking so did. So bad. And I was like, and we, she's, I can't even say the words around her. I'm like, please just stop talking about it. So she's like, what's wrong? What could it be? I was like, I don't know what it could be. Please you know, me you know. I didn't know at the time. Had you had I gas? didn't know. I couldn't do that either. I couldn't do any of it. I just couldn't. And also I went to an old girls school. I am trying to keep that shit in. You would rather keep it in than fucking ruin your life but forever. But when you sleep, it just like, you know, like the famous scene of Malcolm in the Middle where like Helen Lois and she's like, I've never shit or fart <laughs> in front of you because I love you. And he's like, honey, every night when you fall asleep, you explode. But I still love you. <laughs> Maybe I was doing that. That's hell to think about. Why would you say that to me now? I won't be able to sleep either. Thanks, Helen. Natural. Now I won't be able to sleep either. This is oh, hell. This is girlfriend. hell. This so is hell. So what did the doctor do? Dig it out? No, Jesus. What do you think doctors do? <laughs> Came with a little no. shovel, like an exploration. No, 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 no. They just gave me medicine. It's a great question, Em. How did I do a half marathon? Em asks. The answer is in extreme pain. It's an extreme, I was in so much pain. When it started, I thought, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. But Chloe Pets is quite an infectious yeah. force. Yeah. And I thought, well, I have to. And also, part of me honestly thought, maybe running will help. <laughs> like, get things I moving. I kind of get it as far as like a movement thing goes. Yeah. Andrew, <laughs> who do you honestly think is like the stupider one out of the two of us as far as hospital visits this year goes. As far as hospital visits? Because I'd say my um, egg poisoning mm -hmm. was genuine and very stressful. Yeah. You had a problem with the coil. I'd say that was genuine and stressful. You respraining your ankle mad. from drinking. Re okay. Ankle sprain though, awful. What poor little Helen. Mm. And not shitting. That's mad. <laughs> that is kind of mad. Who is the biggest strain on the NHS? <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. To Which the plug NHS? is the biggest drain on no, the NHS? I'm sorry to the NHS. <laughs> Catherine backed herself up into a strain on the NHS. <laughs> <laughs> Hell! And also, hell. I didn't go back. Okay, I actually have now lost my sock on the ankle that I can't reach. <laughs> I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. 
I can do it. It's just the sock. I can't do the shoe. Look, feel it. It's so puffy. I know, poor Ellen. Put your shoe back on. Yes, thank you. Owie. Oh, Kelly's saying she is the best cook in the world. Yes, thank you. Owie. Uh, oh, Catherine's serving me. Andrew, she's down and away now. You can tell us what you think about her, um, the, the poo story. Oh, it's, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. It's so but, funny. Catherine's now saying men are disgusting and it's a different rule. Okay. No, poor Helen. I, I do think the egg poisoning is stupider. Really? Yeah. How, Sorry. though? Because how would I know that the eggs would eventually turn against me? Eggs, very famously quite a temperamental egg, foods, egg. food item. Eggs and raw chicken really up there, actually, in terms of things. Wasn't eating raw after. chicken? I'm not a moron. Well, no, obviously, I didn't think you were putting you like, raw chicken You eat chicken, chicken when it's been cooked you. for a minute. A minute, minute chicken. Hell, Christ alive. Minute chicken. Actually, you know what? Um, I'm actually more impressed now that you've not been to the hospital more. I think, should we try and pledge no trusty hogs ho hospital visits next year? Let's just go up to Christmas, shall we? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> fine. Until Christmas. Let's make it achievable. Wait, so what's that? Up Two months, no no hospital. You got it. But we can visit other people there. Yeah. yeah. Good. We still get our fix. Oh, the two no. of us bleeding from the head like, we said not this year. <laughs> that would be incredible if we were just stitching. We'll do a medical expert <laughs> episode where we're just stitching each other like, will this work? We don't want to be stupid bitches though. We're not getting this whole thing. <laughs> Welcome to the Trusty Hogs Lobotomy Special. <laughs> oh, don't I watch this Everything film? Yeah, you know, I'm still watching like a new film every single week. What? So, what? I've told you about this. You did not tell us about this. Not on the podcast, but in real life, I've mentioned that I'm watching a new film every single no, week. No, you didn't. Emma! Who's Emma? Emma! Oh, <laughs> Catherine! No. I wasn't sure who Emma was or if Emma was the film Emma, you'd watch. <laughs> okay, anyway, so I watched Coraline last week. And then this week, I watched The Horror Express. It's a 1970s film about murders that happen on a train starring Christopher Lee. And Do you ever I, think that like... And they lobotomize someone on the train. It's amazing. Okay, thank God. I, I genuinely, just before you got to the end of that sentence, I was like, how, where are the threads between conversation points with her? The horror But there it is. It's lobotomy. Currently available on BBC iPlay. Wow, gosh. Um, so, okay, we've had a lot of news is what I'm saying. You've brought us a gift from Germany. This is from two lovely German hogs, who, by the way, are from West Germany and came all the way to Berlin. Whoa. Which is, is it, that far? It's far. Whoa. It's far. That's like across the entire, like <gasps> down the country. Oh my God, I've just seen what it is. <gasps> Don't. Sorry, that's when, really Wait, I will say this to lovely Laura and there was someone else with you and I can't remember their name. I'm sorry. Um, They... um. When they gave this to me, I did not open it because I was on the street, I was drinking and I had like See the smoking and it was a disaster. But when I opened this, I just absolutely lost it. So do you want to read out the note? Dear Giggless Hog Cult Leaders, thanks for all the laughs. Lara, P.S. Andrew's holding that because he is an IT wizard. Apologies, I was limited by the selection. And then cut to this box that Helen has just opened, which appears to be miniature Legos of the Hogs team. Catherine... <laughs> And Helen. There's a desk. There's it's a little desk. It's a desky. But look, it says hogs on the other side of it. We're <gasps> going to put it here. Oh my God, it says hogs. Wait, wait, I'm going to do it like this. Is this me? That's you. <laughs> and Catherine's holding a little glass that says champagne. Oh, she's such a princess. She drinks champagne. She's ginger. Look at her. My one's holding a box of pizza. <laughs> Catherine can't do it. We'll put a picture up on our Instagram. Go follow us on Instagram to see it. It is the cutest thing. And Andrew. Yours has pizza. Mine has pizza. Andrew's is holding a little balloon doggy. Oh, Andrew's actually coming over to look at it. Why have I got a balloon doggy? I love how no one is on mic apart from me. It is finally the Helen show. Um, Catherine's got more news, everyone. Okay. Right, put your Lego figure down. Okay. I just love playing with her and I like putting her on her little ledge that says Catherine. But she's going to live at the studio, I think, darling. Okay, but I want to keep her forever from my house. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll stop doing the podcast and then, oh, give to Helen. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll put it down. What Catherine. a role reversal there. <laughs> Catherine, stop playing with the toys. Catherine, come on. Come playing on. with it for too long, Andrew. You're not supposed to do that. Hello, Helen. Helen, we're waiting on our guest. Yes. Before she gets here. I um, get my £20 gift. Oh, no, I haven't bought it yet. Already? You wanted it? Okay, fine. 
Whoa, you're livid. No, no, I'm not. I'm really, I'm actually, I'm trying to be you. Are you trying to be chill? No, I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to be the you of the podcast. Oh, okay. Like, okay, you didn't get it from me. I'll get it next week then. Okay. I think I'd be more past I get better. But okay, sure. fine. I'll get it next week. Fine. I'll get it when I guess I'm already feeling better and I don't need to be reassured by you. That's okay, what I would have said. That's pathetic. That's pathetic. I'm sorry. I'm no, just saying like, sorry. Be, be better. <laughs> be better. Um, tell me your newsy. Tell me your newsy. Um, okay, so I got loads of messages um, after Butch Please asking if I'd be at the next one. The answer is it's a mystery. I can't just I would sign up for Cream Town every month. and then You have to sign up for Cream Town every month. So we go together? Now I'm allowed to go. Yeah. I would actually love to. Okay, when is it? I, I don't know. We could check though. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it. it out. We'll find out. Okay, I'm genuinely excited. I want to go to it. I'm excited. I want more fun nights out. You need them. We need them. I feel like I do a lot of drinking after gigs at the moment. Yeah, But same. it's not the same. It's not a night out. It's And also I'm drinking often after gigs for like, because I'm too tired if I don't have a drink or I'm like trying to like calm down after the that, gig. I do it for and that's a bad reasons. reason. That's a bad reason. That's exactly why I do it. Like a glass of wine, particularly like after doing yeah. like a long show and it's just like unwind and chill out. Yeah. Oh my God, I've got something mad to tell you as well. Tell me immediately. Talk about chilling out after a gig. Yeah. So the Tuesday night is the night my mum is coming to see the show. Right. Show gets cancelled because I sprayed my ankle. Coincidence? Coincidence. <laughs> Coincidence. Okay. Okay. My brother was there with the girl that he's been dating for literally two dates. Okay. And she was just going to tag along and see the show. Nice. But then my mum meets her. <gasps> and then in the ultimate and searching for the daughter, she never had move. When the show got cancelled and they were like, my mum was like, I can go Thursday. My brother was like, oh, I'll be aware. I can't do Thursday. <gasps> and I went, with the girlfriend? you can come with me. No! We'll get to know each other really well. And then the fucking girlfriend, she was amazing. But we had drinks after it, even after my mum had gone. And she was like, yeah, your brother's still on Tinder. Like, this is weird. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, this is fucking weird. Yes, this is weird. I don't like this either. My cousin was there. So she you met half the family. What it was I'm, insane. What I'm hearing is now that your mom and your brother are dating the same woman. <laughs> that's Apparently what I'm, so. That's all I'm hearing from this. Apparently so. It was absolute madness. That's absolutely mad. Okay, well, I have something to tell you before our guest arrives. Oh my God, okay. Okay, look, I didn't want to identify my new girlfriend because I've also been dating her for five milliseconds, but... Okay, it's been, it's been longer than five milliseconds. But um, she happens to be in a double act, a comedy double act. And one half of that double act, the other half, are, is our guest today, Charlie Clive. What? You know this. You're going out with Ellen from Britain? What? what? That's not the news. That's not the news. My point is, I thought they would both come on and we would talk to them about their comedy. But instead, Ellen refuses to come on this podcast. Wait, are you Which serious? Which I actually kind of respect her for. Yeah, she refuses to. So could you leave her, could you send her a voice note? Yeah, I respect that so much, but I've got her number. I'll okay, no, no, like message her yeah. now. You okay. love to do on-air podcasts suddenly, or voice notes and suddenly you don't want to. Suddenly I'm choosing she dignity for me. She refuses to come on the podcast so we can only have Charlie. But I want you, the listener to know that if you want to go see their show in December, which you should, it's really funny. I saw it before we started fucking and I still wanted to fuck her, so that's a good sign. What I'm point is, I'm saying that like there is a lesbian in the double act. Oh, Ellen, poor little Helen, you don't come on podcast day. I understand that you don't want to talk to Catherine, but maybe when Catherine away one episode, we do one together. I love woo, and you're right, big tits are the most important thing. <laughs> I send you. Okay, I thought you'd be like more, I thought you'd give out to her for not coming on our podcast. No, that was poor really... Helen. I, but I feel like, how rude of her not to come, but then... The, the, do you, want, do you want to know what she said? Sorry, correction, actually. It turns out Catherine wants me to be angry at you um, for not coming on the podcast. So how about you go, fuck yourself, you fucking whore. Um, sorry, love you so much. We don't know each other like that yet. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> that felt good. That felt good. That felt good. Do you want to I know? By it. I actually, oh, I think I've got a rash. I'm getting a rash. Do you know what? She tried to make it romantic. It was like, the thing is, you've done podcasts with exes before and it didn't work out. I mean, that's true. That's fucking true. <laughs> Work out which of our previous five guests are exes of Catherine Bohart. <laughs> Please submit your sub answers to no. Andrew's parents' house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be picking a winner and you too get to watch Catherine interact with her exes in her workplace. Yay. <laughs> hey. Anyway, should we bring so on So fun. Let's do it, everybody. It's Charlie, Charlie Clive. Clive.
Hello, if you like Trusty Hogs, why not join our Patreon? Listen, we have an extra episode every single week if you do, which is amazing. And you can mm-hmm. listen to the backlog of them if you have just joined. You get all the 57 free ones that are already out. Additionally, we put up extra content, extra shows, extra live shows. And lately, an entire episode of a Solving Listener Problems called the Mailbag Special Edition 1. There's yes, so many please. treats on there. I think it's worth a fiver, if not more. Oh my God. Come on, you fucking little piggy whores. Join us for five pounds a month. You get everything and you can be our best friend. I love how they're the whores, but we're asking for their money. Confusing. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye. doing a live Christmas show for Trusty Hogs. It's called Hog 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 like ho 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 but Hog 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 and hog, you can hog, drink hog. egg hog um, yeah. it's like eggnog but with bacon in it. Mm. Egg hog <laughs> only at the Bill Murray pub on December the 18th for Trusty Hogs Live Hog 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 Bye Bye <laughs> Welcome, Charlie fucking Clue! Oh my god, hi! I'm the Catherine Show! I'm putting ding 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 boom boom boing! We- None of them. <laughs> Love that sound effect for me. Thank you. You know, like when they do like radio. De- I'm trying to bring that yeah. back into the it podcast. It was nice. Charlie Clive, you will know her from Pure. If anybody watched that, the wonderful show about OCD. My also- old agent was obsessed with it. <laughs> and lovely Helena Ba-dum-bum. Bumpus. And we did. A- I did a gig and Helena was there and Brittany were on. And Helena was like, oh my God. It's her. Oh my God. And I, I said hi to Charlie and she went, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. You're also Thank one you. half of the incredible double double act Jeez, sketch sorry. group, Brittany. True. And you're currently filming The Lazarus Project. True again. How do you have time for us, Charlie Clive? Um, I've, well, I've got time. <laughs> well, I Catherine made me come here. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for having me. It. I'm very happy to be here. Has filming a television show really nice, really fun? Yeah. Um, it's uh, just go straight to catering. It's all right. The catering's good. Okay, so what we're we talking? Breakfast, um, lunch, dinner, buffet. Breakfast, lunch, no dinner. What? What? No, I know. Even on a night shoot. So then you have they call, still call it lunch, but you have it at seven. What kind of foods are we talking about? Is it a buffet? It is a buffet. Nice. Yeah, but... Um, no, wait, wait, wait. I've been burnt before by saying someone goes, oh, it's a buffet, and you go, nice, and then it turns out it's just a selection of sandwiches or just soup in a cup. No, no, no. This okay. is a buffet. Okay, talk to me. Um, two proteins, a vegetarian option... Hello. ...and a vegan option. Hello! Yeah. Actors. And you can you can mix and match. <gasps> Whoa. And, but actually, you can't really have the vegan option. Why? That's reserved. Because they only make a certain amount for the vegans. Oh, fair. That's it's so, fair. Okay, it's fine. That's fair, I guess. That's fine. But is it ever better? Oh, often. Oh, and actually, um, if you just get the vegan option, they'll let you have that. But you can't, understandably, you can't go, I'll have the beef and the... <laughs> the vegan option. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah that seems questionable. fair. That yeah. seems fair. Then okay, cool. You know that um, Britney was one of the first shows I saw in at the Fringe? Was it? Mm-hmm. Explains a lot. What? Here we go. No. <laughs> Well, it doesn't explain anything actually because Charlie Clive cock blocked the hell out of this, me. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Uh, unintentionally. Oh, very unintentionally. So I had met Charlie a few times and yeah. we only ever when we were in, at shows or very drunk. Yeah. And Or sometimes both at the same sometimes time. Sometimes both, yeah. Oh, I love that for both of you. Yeah. And so I went to see the show because I had never seen Britney, even though you'd been at the fringe a few times at the same time as me. So I was like, I should go. And I went. And you know, I don't really know how I feel about sketch. That's no one does, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so the jury's still out. So much. That's nice. It I'm a seems, sketch. Do you know what it is? It's actually an unfairly a nationalist stance that I have, which is that it feels so traditionally British. Does to me. it? Yeah, that I was like, I don't know. But anyway, I went because I support women, and um, the show was so good. The Thank only you. show I saw at the fringe with Healy's in. Well, yeah, it's sort of our thing. Yeah, it was got to stand out. I haven't out. seen it yet. I'm going to go <gasps> see it at Soho because we were the same time in the Pleasant Square. Yeah, Yard. true. Oh, of course you were. Which meant that before my show, I was focused on getting in the zone and Charlie and Ellen were plying back pints. Yeah, that's oh true my as God, well. Of course. Okay, well, um, I went and I, is it okay for me to say the premise of the show? Please. Is which of them do you fancy more? And I went with two boys and... Ellen, your sketch partner, is a lesbian. So True. I was like, the lesbian, please. And the boys were like, Charlie Clive, Charlie Clive, Charlie Clive, Charlie Clive. Congrats. Um, feels and good, right? It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> but so then afterwards, I was like, I mean, that lesbian was quite cute. So 
I'll message Charlie, who's the only one I know. And I was like, hey, Charlie, great show. Can I get you guys a drink? And <laughs> hours later, Charlie messaged back to me like, oh, no, sorry, we're playing Cards in the Meadows. And I was like, whoa, that lesbian did not fancy me. <laughs> well, th- that lesbian <laughs> didn't know that you had messaged me. <laughs> and you'd also messaged me on Instagram. And yes, I, had. I don't have my notifications switched on, on Instagram because I like to be in the moment. And wow. so, I love that for thank you, though. You. Thank you. I've never thought of you as an actor just till now. <laughs> <laughs> I like to live presently. <laughs> um, I really like to sort of absorb the world around me. Um, and so then when I did see it, I was like, oh, that's such a shame that we miss Catherine. And I had thought, I didn't think it was a come on for Ellen. Because <laughs> well, that, that, not clear. You know what I mean? Not clear. That's not a clear come on. Yeah. Yeah. But then you but then you did tell me repeatedly that it was. Yeah. So, so. And then you told Ellen. And then, well, Ellen, you had already sort of made your intentions quite clear to Ellen by the point that you told me it was a come on. Intentions quite clear. That sounds so like I had been like chasing her around the No, end. that's not fair. You're right. No. <laughs> okay, I think it's pretty fair towards the last two weeks, no? Yeah, that's not true. We were as equally chasing each other. Okay, you, were both, okay. you were both into it. You both were and you were are both into super it. into it, but you were your presence at the Pleasance Courtyard <laughs> compared but, to your actual venue was incredible. I was at, I was there a lot. I was Which just I, I thought for a while, there was about a week where I thought Catherine just really enjoyed meeting me after my show. <laughs> But I was her reason to be there, to be like, oh, I'm just seeing Helen. And then she'd just stare at Britney's venue waiting for it to end. No, I didn't. <laughs> Don't! Bullshit! You were there every day. Every like day. Cool. And then I'd be like, oh my God, do you want to just hang out or something? And you'd be like, yeah, no, we should hang out. We should hang out. Where's the... What's happening over the... Should we go around the corner? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. This is actually insane. a nightmare. But insane. that's But that's, um, that's nice because, uh, as you said, the whole point of the show was that people fancy us. Yeah. So that's proof positive that it worked. It did work. I'm um, surely you knew, surely you were getting loads of messages after the show. This every is day. and you this is sad because you know that I wasn't because <laughs> I did complain to you about this a lot at the fringe. <laughs> but I don't understand how that's possible. I actively also I actively was I wasn't sort of like looking for anybody to be obsessed with me, but I was thinking surely that's going to happen considering surely that's someone the point will. of the yeah. show. Um <laughs> and then it wasn't happening and you did ask me a few times, Catherine, like, <laughs> oh, like, people slipping into your DMs or do you have people coming up to you after the show? And I... we mainly had students coming up to us saying, oh, Ellen's, like, such a, like, uh, Ellen, I think Ellen's amazing. It's so exciting, like, to see, like, um, somebody queer. And I was like, this everybody at the fringe is queer. Don't tell me about it. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! Can I say, like, Thank we get you! Thank <laughs> you! We know what bisexuality is now. I do think, like, and I'm an ally, like and I want to make that so clear. Oh. I, I'm, I want to celebrate Ellen. I want to celebrate Ellen, and I'm an ally. But I also would be like, <laughs> could one student fancy me? <laughs> the thing is, I did. I also fancied you after the show, but Ellen doesn't like when I say that. No, and thank you for telling me. I, thank you. I think I've told you that more a few times. times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I come to Soho, do you want me to just sort of like jump on you after the show yeah. and push Ellen down the stairs? I yeah. I. <laughs> Y- you meet us at the top of the stairs. I'd be like, oh, she's a manta. What? Yeah. That, one was, that one's minging. That's a minging manta. Or actually, better for me, if you go, God, that one's gorgeous, but I actually prefer the personality of that one more about me. <gasps> really? Because I think better to not say, that one's so hideous, I have to like that one. <laughs> better okay. to say, both beautiful, I much prefer Charlie. Okay. So like, <laughs> as a oh, person. <laughs> as a person and a, a lover. I'd have a good time with both of you, but that one just got better chat because you are fucking dull as shit. And <laughs> then go, Munter! You're a fucking Munter! I think you've decided it's Munter, so do, let's do that. <laughs> Often in 2022, do you have opportunity to shout "munter" at someone? It's so true. Not enough. No, not enough. Like That's true. it's just it's completely gone from our vocabulary, which is such a shame. But I do as like... a munter. No, I you mustn't it. do this. I was a munter for a while. <laughs> no, I won't I believe did. that. I had a very like unwashed eyeliner from like two weeks at school like Barry M. Dazzle Dust down the face oh, yeah. like no tissues but constantly snotting on the sleeve I had, <laughs> I had a month phase but these all sound like choices you made to oh, stay yeah. in that phase oh I was in I was full munting yeah. okay okay yeah, yeah. can I just say though on the show aside from whether or not you fancy either Charlie or Ellen and it's implausible that you won't fancy one of them I would True. say the show really has it all. It's also about friendship. It is. I'd like to think it's mainly about friendship. No, I didn't no. get that. <laughs> no, no. I thought it was mainly about hot girls, but also yeah. friendship. I think it's like, it's about 
two hot girls in a friendship. I, and listen, there should be more representation of that. Thank you. Where can you watch two hot women be friends on television? Eh? Yeah. And also... Do on a podcast. Uh, <laughs> you, yeah. And you guys are filming this so yeah. people can see three hot girls. Yeah, oh my God. She's so cute. Which yeah, is, what a platter. Which is gorgeous. Oh my God. Which is so crazy. nice. This is crazy. But I do think that um, a lot of the show is also us talking about how we have we weren't always the hot girls we are now. And that's we, a beautiful story. Thank what a you. struggle. What a struggle. It's, oh, wait, um, were you absolute munters? So, no, we weren't munters. We were Minions. just like, I actually remember thinking all the way through secondary school that I had like a lot going for me. <laughs> and um, that a lot of people around me like weren't just not on my level they yet. intimidated. And I yeah. kept thinking like, God, it's such a shame for all these parties that I'm not invited to because I would bring such good mm-hmm. snacks. Good, good, vibes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good snacks, good vibes. I'd get picked up early. Yeah. yeah. So if you got sick of me, I'd be gone first. I'll take the group picture. I won't be in it, but I'll take the group picture. Absolutely. I and fast. I'm the one yeah. there with the digital camera. Oh, sweet angel. Yeah. So I'll take I'll, the photos. I'll, Facebook. I'll, I'll, I'll tag everyone. I will I'll have tag everyone. all of, yeah, the albums and I'll name them something funny. I'll caption every photo. I'll tag <laughs> right. you the night I get home. But that's what you need. <laughs> sweet angel. We yeah. have someone like that. Incredible. I'm so sorry you yeah. invited. Well, it, I, I, sometimes, I sometimes was. Ellen gets cross at me sometimes because she says that I... Um, make a bigger deal of not being cool in school because uh, I was quite cool in school but like I think people were like oh we really like enjoy- you were Helen it doesn't sound <laughs> like you were I'm sorry no I was I like was quite cool in school you weren't invited it's it's just I think people were like oh, I love hanging out with you within the hours of 8am and 3pm so <laughs> but on the weekend you do your you do your thing and we'll do our thing collectively oh, darling <laughs> and what was your thing I would watch um, the breakfast club and then I would restart it and watch it again. Me too. Because Yay. one watch is you feel like, yeah, I've seen a lot of it, but yeah, two watches you've really seen it all. I did the same with Dirty Dancing. I did the same with Pretty in Pink. I oh, Pretty in Pink. What? Oh my God. Why? Why couldn't like sort of frumpy redheads be in when we were in? in but I don't think that, that M- Molly Ringwald wasn't frumpy. No, she she was of her time. Like in the eighties, she looked amazing. But be- yeah, I think people would have perceived her. Or as was she frumpy? She- and you were both like, I see a lot of myself in her, and she's the coolest girl at school. I oh, saw yeah, a lot of myself as, as Ali Sheedy in the Breakfast Club the, with, when yes. she with the dandruff on the. Yeah, I need to watch the Breakfast Club. I it's watched great. it once year, it? like once years ago, but I don't remember it. It's the one where they end and they go like, we'll be friends on Monday, right? Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. It. right. Well, but wait, all a big of, spoiler. Okay. Yeah. To be fair, that that's. But also, if that's, that's the climax of the, of the film, film, that does does sound like a bad no, film. No, it was a very good <laughs> film. It was a very good film. Um, did you have dandruff at school? Yeah, big time. I literally just watched this. I've got on this algorithm of hairdressing videos. So I've just got out the knits one, which I probably won't now have said that. Oh, I'll relate. But they're removing... Yeah, Catherine never had knits. Don't get me started. I never had knits. She had knits. She's just lying. No, I didn't. She's lying to herself. But there's dandruff they, removal ones. But oh. they still do it with a knit comb. And it is so satisfying. I okay. did not have knits. I don't know why you can't accept this fact. I think that your stance on knits is my stance on thrush. And my stance on thrush <laughs> is... I've either never had it or I've always had it. <laughs> and I think maybe that's where you are with knits. <laughs> You've okay, always yeah. had them. No, no, I'm going to need a minute. You've come for me. Right. Let's right, do it. Right, right, right. On a scale of one to ten, <laughs> yeah. after sex, how quickly do you shower? Gosh, okay. Um, hang on. On a scale of one to ten? Yeah, how quickly do you shower? Ten being you're already in the shower. Is he still climaxing? <laughs> I like that you said as he's still climaxing. Zero being awake. I'm not climaxing from that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're in the shower. No, there's too much going on in the shower to, to enjoy sex in the shower, I think. So it's a hard no for me on that one. I I guess I'm a six. I'm a gentleman six. Okay, so then you, you've, you've had thrush. There's no way about it. How? In which case I've always had it. What colour is it? It's what? Vagina! What colour is my vagina? Vagina hole! <laughs> Catherine, I'll be honest, this isn't exactly the conversation that we'd be having. No, I didn't either. Oh, no. Let's talk about pretty and pink. Is it pink? And it's pretty. <laughs> and it's pretty. It's both. I think, right. Oh, Can you see how damaging it is for feminism? How damaging it is if you don't believe Can in I thrush? Like I that? believe in thrush. I absolutely... Listen, not only do I believe in thrush, but I think, hell yeah, thrush. <laughs> and anyone that has it, and anyone that doesn't, in my mind, fine. I just don't have... Uh, I just don't think I've had it. Sorry if that makes me like perfect. (laughs) 
Sorry if that makes me so desirable to men out there. Wow, it seems like maybe she's perfect and desirable. And also, I, I just... cannot believe I'm in a room with or, two liars. But Oh, oh. Helen, maybe I've always had it. Maybe my normal. No, because there's no way that your four-year-old taint was itchy as fuck. Like, <gasps> Is there not? Helen. I had worms a lot as a kid. You Great. had worms? <laughs> yes! Yes! You're both so gross. Worms are common. No, it's, worms it's are fine. common. It's fine. Can we normalize get it. worms? Can we please? <laughs> okay, I just realized they that... were my friends. Of course, <laughs> they're so close to you, man. What yeah. kind of worms are you talking about? Anus worms. Not like garden variety. They grow in the, the ones we spoke about the other week when you walk. I, on I covered my ears with the barefoot and stuff like that, and you can get wormies, and then the worms come out and you poo, and they're little white silver. If things. you're embracing the countryside as a child, you're getting worms, huh? That's I'm not disgusting. joking. Worms have not come up a conversation with me for like a decade and then three times in the last two months. It's been incredible. And wow. I haven't been forcing it. That was natural. No, I, yeah, I, I, I wanted to talk yourself. about worms. Wow. I do have a question you ever... for you, actually, Catherine. Oh. What would you rather if you had to have one, nits or worms? Oof, God, nits. that's crazy. Yeah? Nits. Really? Because so. worms is... Worms is Rug fine. answer, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Worms, you shit worms, them out. You get away. Worms get out of there quickly. Worms don't want to be there. No. Nits want to be there. And worms there. just get flushed down the toilet. They're gone. But I could have the, the worms inside me for seven weeks. No. The way I should. Like, okay, oh, fair. <laughs> no, listen, a good point well made. I would be a worm. Mega worm. The worms would be me and I them. Yeah. Like, you just wheel of worms. You could do no. that outfit that Heidi Klum did for Halloween. I would be the outfit. Oh, I would yeah. become the outfit. That oh, would be God. amazing But for I did, you. while you guys were talking about thrush, I did think that I could call my vagina Molly Ringwald. Pretty and pink. Yeah, red that's red nice. Yeah. Cute. Cute. <gasps> that's cute. All right. Cute. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. no I, I think that's really good. I feel like you cared. That's all right. Hey, I'm, hey. I'm still really right. upset no. about the thrush thing. <laughs> I think I'm feeling the energy of, of Helen being upset about the thrush thing, which is why I couldn't appreciate the name of your vagina being Molly Ringwald. Thank you. But now that I'm thinking about it more, I think it is, it's a great name. Thank you. That means Does a it lot. get itchy, though? My vagina? Yeah. Like, can you sit still? Um. What, hang on. All the time? Do you meditate? No. If you can't meditate, I think you must have thrush. Okay. It, or I haven't tried to meditate. Okay, that, that could be it. But maybe I haven't tried because I know subconsciously the thrush you will get in the way thrush. of it. How about even at the beginning or end of a period? Is it like just... I don't get periods. Okay. You know what, Catherine? I would really like us to continue with this conversation, but I'm going to need to elect out of it for a little bit, okay? Are you getting angry? Yeah. No, no I'm chill. I'm chill. I'm just sort of like, I'm trying to think. So she gets rage fits. No, 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 no. I'm genuinely zen. Congratulations on your um, no thrush and congratulations on your no nits and no worms. It's just as someone who is trying, sorry, to you. represent... <laughs> Women's bodies. Yeah. Helen, have we put in a out? way that everything yeah. is pouring out of me at all times? Yeah. Okay, there is cum in my pants right now. Helen. Which is mad. Because oh I woke up, I went toilet, yeah. I had a shower, I watched two episodes of Girls Five Ever. That'll do it. Charlie, can I apologize? And I came no, here. No, listen. And happened. I came here Helen. and somehow during that journey, I came. And it wasn't about the bus. Came. It wasn't about the bus. But there is something moist in you my came? pants all the time. Do you ever just look at your knickers at the end of the day and you go like, why is it slimy? But yeah, it but is that, that's not cum, babe. I don't know what it is. But you know that, hang on. <laughs> yeah, the sensation of coming. I am familiar with this. I have, I, I have masturbated. So you know that it's... Masturbated that like it's, four to five times a day. Well, could you have just masturbated at some point? And not wiped it. Yeah. Yes. Rather than just a surprise come that didn't feel like <laughs> you came. But it still feels like a surprise come. Okay, well, can I, I, maybe sorry. that's a good thing. And I would just like to Helen, represent stop all changing. women who have wet pants. Helen, can I just explain to Charlie what's happening, which is essentially, I'm so sorry, I think you are our fir first like full-time professional actor in the studio, and what is happening is Helen feels threatened. No, you mustn't. And she's over, I think, playing her hand today because she's feeling like a little intimidated. I think you heard me saying that I I think I've never had thrush and you took that to mean that I, that that's a good thing. Whereas what I think is going to happen is when thrush gets me, and it will, <laughs> it, honey, it'll be a train wreck. And I want to be there. I'll, well, I, I will call you. <laughs> Can you actually, because I just watched the new season of Big Mouth and there's an episode when... No Jessie spoilers! Angers her vagina. Okay. 
Is that a spoiler? I feel like I had to finish a sentence. No, that sounds like something that might have happen in, in any episode. Yeah, I haven't watched the most recent okay, series. So Jesse oh, angers yeah. her vagina and the vagina gets angry and takes on a different personality. And that's what's going to happen to yours. And when that happens, I'm going to be fucking cackling. You, what you can't hear is that Helen's finger door. is very close to Charlie's face. And I can only... Almost straight in the eye. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. It, I don't think it's the actor thing. I don't think it's that. I just, I think I'm just having like a moment. Helen, what I will say about... Process. What I will say Thank about you. Charlie while you're feeling threatened about her okay. is that her and Ellen have a really beautiful friendship and they do talk about that in their show but they also it's like feels real in real life unlike ours when we just talk to each other on the podcast um because they live together i call you up all the time you do but i don't answer but they um they <laughs> live together can you imagine if we live together i want to live with you i know you don't i do it would be a nightmare it'd be so beautiful how do you live with your best friend and still oh, stay friends this has been a really tough day for little ellie <laughs> i do feel like m- my being here feels like has brought up something within this dynamic that <laughs> should have let, should have stayed buried. Let's do a compliment circle. No, we can't do a compliment circle unless we include Charlie. Am I allowed in this, Helen? I worry. You have okay. to. It's a compliment triangle. I think you're incredible at everything apart from itchy cunty. Oh, thank you, Helen. Thank that you. wasn't very specific. And yet so specific. <laughs> okay, I'll go for Charlie. Yeah. I think it's really admirable that you're here and could have left. Oh, yeah, really beautiful stuff. Nice. Thank you so much really for being sweet. here. So nice. Also, she says, truly says noodles better than anybody I've ever heard. Say it. Noodles. <laughs> ah! One more time. Noodles. <laughs> Isn't it the best thing? How did that come up? You were eating. Uh, I eat a lot of noodles. And it was, Ellen and I were just talking about noodles one day and then we just uh, fell in love with saying noodles. <laughs> noodles. <laughs> noodles. Because oh, yes. it feels like it represents the noodle better oh. than the word noodle. It's incredible. Charlie Thank saved you. his noodles in my phone because whenever I'm sad or just um, ask her to, she'll say it. Maybe that's what we need then, like a fun word. You need a, It's a safe word, essentially. I don't think we need a safe a word. A safe word, that's good, yeah. We need a safe word. I think, oh, my point is that I think it's lovely that they can live together and I don't, I, my question to Charlie remains, how do you live with your best friend and stay friends? Ellen and I have been best friends for 15 years now. So I think we've seen every shade of each other yeah. at sort of every, uh, like pre and post puberty. Whoa. which is a lot that's a lot of shades yeah. and also we spent five years apart when I was living in America mm-hmm. and then when we, we we lived together because when I had my brain tumor she came to yeah. live with me um, which is why I don't get periods if that makes you feel any better about makes me feel that. bad I know and that's and that and, and that is why I said it um, <laughs> I've that I've been holding that that ace up my sleeve what to me yeah. whenever someone doesn't get periods I'm like oh my god I'm I know and like, I had a brain tumour as I soon as you fell into five that five trap five times a week five times a week I saw you inching towards the trap and I set it and I thought here we go here we go here we go I have seen you use your brain tumour as that particular kind yeah. of conversation I many, have a sprained ankle too many times uh, yeah. Charlie Glive yeah, too I know. many times no it's getting old now it's getting old now but it, but it still works and until it doesn't I'm using it I get it I get it but she oh. lived with me through that and, and then we just it just sort of, I then moved back to England and would stay with her when I had nowhere to be, when I had nowhere to stay in London. Yeah. And then we did live separately for a while and then it just made sense after the pandemic to find somewhere together. Yeah. Actually, we lived together before the pandemic as well, so that's a lie. <laughs> but it just made sense and then um, it, it, it works, but it's... But we definitely still fight and we definitely still are passive aggressive with each other about but like... that's the best thing about close friends. So I live with my best friend from when I was four. So like, yeah, like 20 something, God 26 damn. years, Emma Black. Yeah. And like, we would fight like sisters, like properly Yeah, that's what fight, it is. Like say insane stuff and then be like best mates again within I'm an hour. I'm not very good at fighting. But you okay. have to, Emma's not great at fighting either. I'd have to be like, no, no, go on, like, tell me, what, what is it? What, what's annoyed you? Like, let's just fight it out sort oh, of thing. that's hell to me. But then you can get that's it heaven done. to me. It's yeah. Like heaven. Only done. because I, I don't think... want it to be passive. I want us to just, yeah. like, clearly Don't you upset. worry you'll break your friendship? No, this no. is the crucial thing. Ellen and I do talk about this quite a lot. The thing with being in a friendship like ours is that there isn't really any way out of it because... Because we work together. <laughs> it's too that late. sounds like a trap, but it's not. It's, it's a joyful place to be. Yeah. Um, and it's not Stockholm Syndrome. But <laughs> because uh, we 
we work together and we choose that work. We love that work. Mm -hmm. It's the, I think it's sort of the, of all of the work that we do, I do think that's the one that is, is sort of the driving force. And also I, at this point, really can't imagine my life without her in any capacity. And so there's, if we fight, we know that it's not gonna, there's no way it can end the friendship. Whereas if you're in a relationship, and I don't mean this in a pointed way. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this whole thing is pointed it's like you, we should be able to fight is what you're saying and now you're going to go and comment on this and also if you <laughs> fight with a, with a partner you might have who also is it's somebody that I live with um, that that that, won't, that that's fine but but we we no, know that we're not going to break there, up But the, whereas I think yeah when you're in like a new relationship that's obviously like a it could lead to that totally and often if you're fighting and you're in a relationship like maybe you won't have like your sex life might change or like the way that mm. you interact with each other is different like romantically whereas that doesn't happen in a platonic friendship so yeah. we don't worry about like not the away. intimacy and that sort of thing yeah. we don't worry that we're not going to be like sexually attractive to each other because that's 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 sort of the goal okay. so you're gonna <laughs> piss each other off you're gonna do it like best friends yeah. you are gonna <laughs> piss each other off totally because you know too much about each other as well so there's like, too you much see them making like repeated like mist- like anything and you're just sort of like yeah ah, we know so much about each other but then you can do anything and it's still going to be like love at the end and also there's that thing of like you sometimes will take the other person for granted because mm-hmm. you know that they're going to forgive you I do that I'm the worst of that. I think I, I think Ellen and I sort of take it in turns to be the crapper one, but I definitely, my spells of being dog shit are longer than hers. Interesting. I would I say, would say. I mean, I would say in terms of my best friendships with mm-hmm. Georgie or with you, I feel like it's my job to exclusively compliment and never p- point out your flaws. Doesn't that, isn't that exhausting? No, I love it. I want oh, them to, I want them to oh know God, that there's you, a... Is there a fight that you need to have with me that you haven't had? No, you've been I want no, no, Helen I think, to know that I know, somebody... This would be amazing. I want Helen I'm ready. To know that I'm somebody, ready. I'm no, I, I, want Helen, I want Helen to know that somebody thinks she's the bee's knees every single day of the week. When? Oh, that was really That nice. was so but nice. I do. That and was really sweet. I think my job, especially with you, I feel like my job is to believe in you when you don't believe in you. When I was late this way, morning... Way too much of the time, When I was late this morning... Yeah, but you're always late. How That's okay. That? <laughs> That's okay. You're quirky. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. But that bit, is that passive or is that? That's is funny. funny. That sort of that's like a Telegraph reporter about a, a female stand-up. <laughs> Little thing. She's crazy. She's Come on. Hey, Andrew, do you have a listener problem for us to solve? Uh, I do yeah. indeed. And then could you come back on and we can do like a friendship seminar? Because I feel like I didn't realize this, but clearly we have some problems. Yeah, I think... I feel like we do communicate outside of the podcast, but I'm worried now that you feel ignored. No, 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 no. So I will be getting in the bath with you. No, <laughs> I don't want that. And I will say this. I, don't I think want that. part of that has come from you almost exclusively for a couple of months over the summer calling me from the bath. (laughs) And I said a couple of times, how about call me when I can't hear you washing? Right. Okay, well, I would say, Helen, how about making our calls calm enough that I don't need to call you from a place of zen? Okay, so that's on both of us. Okay. (laughs) Is there a chance, Helen, that you could think about it as Catherine feels so comfortable with me that she can call me in the bath when she's vulnerable. That's nice. And maybe Catherine, there's a part of you that thinks I'm in a Zen place. I'm. This could be time for just me, but I want to talk to my friend Helen. Yeah, I don't really like time for me. That's really nice, actually. That is nice. You call me from the bath because you want to spend time with your friend Helen. That's exactly it. I love you. I love you too. I we'll do, do my that problem if with you, you next week. A re- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do think though, if you want to see a show about friendship and queerness and oh, good yes. allyship, then you should go see Britney at the Soho Theater and come say hello to me. <laughs> oh yeah, and and stay for Helen. And stay for stay Helen. For the absolute bitch fight um, of me versus Ellen at the end of it. Me but Helen, Helen versus that. Ellen. Yeah. But also, do genuinely tell Charlie Clive how hot she is at the end, because it turns out she needs to hear it. But again. only if you mean it. Oh, yeah, they will. Oh, they'll, they'll mean, mean it. it. I know. I know. A lot of lesbians look how hot you are. Look at these. And also like, look at Charlie Clive. She's like the ultimate queer baiter. Oh, oh my god, Helen, you didn't ask what did we ask for? Oh Catherine, god. did you ask me yesterday when you actually touched my chair? Oh my god! <laughs> it was an accident! It was an accident! Wait, did you grab someone's tit? It was an accident! accident. I, gra- I grazed her tit and I didn't mean to. What's the graze? That? Oh my god! <laughs> What's the graze? Oh my god, you didn't you just pinched my nipple. You wanna oh. go with that? Thank you. <laughs> I just laid it. For those that aren't watching, I just laid it 
just so softly on the, on the, the top hand, bit. Yeah. The gentle hand. Oh, actually, speaking of, you want, before we get the problem, do you want to ask Charlie Clive for consent to do your magic trick? Can I please um, touch your breasts and tell you your bra size? Yeah, because okay. I don't know it. <laughs> it's her secret time. She can do it. <laughs> She'll already get in there. Sorry. That's big. Oh, it's going to go around the back. Oh, That's, fun, isn't it? <gasps> That's a bit of fun. This is really well, you've fun. you've hidden them, but you're not wearing a wire either. So you're no. not touching anything. You're not playing around with anything. No, either, no, never. That is a lovely... <laughs> Wow, you know what? Actually, you're cusping CD, but that's, <laughs> that's a, a 32 cusp CD. But I'm going to say D. You could wear Whoa, a D. that's crazy! But Thank you've you. underestimated the size of my back. No, I haven't. You're going to you're wearing a 34, but you need to be a 32. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god! I'm telling you, the, you'll have you'll She's be able magic. to get more than four fingers between your back and your strap, so it's too big. Yeah. Oh, this is She's insane. Magic. You're welcome. That was remarkable. Thank you very much. Uh, wow, I feel seen like a hundred dollars. No, <laughs> <laughs> not a million, <laughs> but still like a good chunk of change. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Helen. Oh You're God, welcome. Lovely big breasts, though. Thank you. Really nice. Oh with my a God, slight thank back you. as well. She's insane. hiding it under all that Annie Hall coolness. But thank she's, yes, she's got really yeah. that yeah. under Annie Hall coolness. Really appreciate that. Cup. Damn, girl. Damn. All right, Damn. let's go. Let's go. Lovely stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> um. Andrew, gay man <laughs> response if ever I've heard one. Lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think I think Charlie's going to be a very good um, problem solver because she's already solved your problem. Oh, thank God. you. Yeah. Well, she created the problem first. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Problem. yeah. <laughs> Fan of my MO. Yeah, so fixed now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is a problem from Elle. Hi, Hi Elle. Uh, Elle says, uh, I love you all. I love all you guys. Uh, I'm a girl who loves girls and I'm 33. Love uh, that. I right? have so many problems. Um, it's been hard finding the one to ask you about, but I've decided to use the one about my girlfriend so at least it can be her problem if you don't resolve it. Break up with her. <laughs> oh, Helen. Gosh. Just the problem the first. Just a guess. Um, I love being loved and love loving, but I have somehow found myself in a five-year relationship with someone who finds affection difficult. Ooh, We're talking right. physical and emotional affection, and I feel so grossly desperate, it's making me crazy. Is it too much to ask from my partner if she finds it so excruciating, or is it all a big sign that I'm clearly not pushing her buttons? Uh, or am I being toxic in asking it from her, or is she not being communicative with me? What, what do I do? What's happening? Please help. Oh, Elvis reminds me a lot of Thomas and Adrian from this series of Married at First Sight UK. I'll say that for nothing. Okay. Thomas wanted intimacy, physical touch. Adrian couldn't give it. Okay. That's what I'll say on it. Break up with her. It's what? Not, no, it's not what? 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 It's not working out, is it? Helen, you can do better than that. Okay. I don't know. Like, if someone genuinely, like, doesn't enjoy emotional in intimacy or physical intimacy and you really crave that in the relationship, you can compromise it, but then one of you is going to be comfortable, one of you is unhappy. Like, you either need to create a different love language that works for the two of you that both fulfills that void, or you just need to be like, look, you need to be fucking hands down my pantsing and telling me your feelings about your childhood three nights a week. Not at the same time. No, I would agree. That really? feels, that feels uh, like I bad think, advice. I, yeah. think, <laughs> I think let them rip the band aid off and do both at the same time. Be like, right, it's emotional and physical intimacy out uh, Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, Sunday afternoons. I'd put that out there. That'd be my schedule. Okay. <laughs> and I'd say touchy touchy and like my dad's never hugged me oh. maybe that ruins the spontaneity in the idea of intimacy and also maybe that ruins the whole relationship well maybe you don't know <laughs> Elle like I know Elle I think I don't I think, it, I think that might be true um, do you have any thoughts Charlie that might not involve talking about whether, whether or not your father touched you as you touch your sexual partner yeah you, I do have some thoughts that, that don't include that emotional intimacy though that is both intimacies that yes. is ticking it is boxes. very efficient yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. No one can say it wasn't efficient. Charlie, please. Um, please. Oh, it, well, it's it's a big. It, it sounds like a very big um, issue, but I don't think that's like L. I would say that's not your issue. It sounds like it's your more probably more your partner's issue than yours, and maybe your partner's struggling with something that isn't to do with you and doesn't have a very good way of communicating that. But definitely, you should never feel responsible for somebody else's happiness. And I think happy people are probably like more inclined to be affectionate and if your partner's struggling with something maybe that maybe handle that issue before turning it inward and thinking you're the problem whoa whoa that's should i say something funny the same no, thing, that was really that was really no that was that really was very similar advice from the two of I, us, I just sort of rephrase what you were you saying did. i think <laughs> it was quite manipulative actually yeah that was yeah. Quite nasty. yeah yeah i thought that was really profound because i 
it really made me realize that what I was about to do was exactly what you shouldn't do. Which is what were you going to do? I, I guess I do rush to make myself responsible for other people's happiness, and I'm quite like solutions based without thinking about whose problem it is before I I will rush to be like well okay here are the following things you could try instead of being like who should be trying who should be that's a mm-hmm. really interesting point Charlie Clive thank you thank my you. god thank mm-hmm. you but also I guess I guess I do think there's an, an another thing to say which is that like some people love in different ways that don't mean either of you are purposely failing the other but that you like you are incompatible it, not, I'm not saying that's the case here but like I've definitely contorted for partners yeah mm. trying desperately to be like is this right will this do are you happy now will that, that and um, to the point of not really recognising myself anymore and then uh, feeling like I'd failed them when actually uh, well, and like they'd failed me when they were doing the same level of we were speaking different languages though yeah and in truth yeah that's the thing nobody did anything wrong we just mm-hmm. weren't meant for each other yeah um, but I also think five years in, you obviously want to give it like the old college try before you quit. Yeah. And so I do think there's some, th- some things to be done. So but what I do think- you think of the Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday? So I do think that's a terrible idea. But I do think maybe Elle's partner needs to be open to therapy? Question mark. Do you think they're in therapy already? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Because maybe they need to figure it out for themselves and that she can't be their counsellor. Yeah. Um, because well, you do that thing where you get really drunk and you get like a bit too vulnerable in conversation. You know, when you. Yeah, like, you could do that. Wait till like four in the morning and then you're like, so I've got a really tricky relationship with my mum. Oh, I. Okay. Know. Yeah. I actually yeah. think. And I, I say this as a person who's recently got into. And then fist! Because <laughs> then <laughs> everything's covered. And that's not. Oh, and fist, concept. you said. Yeah, fist. Fist! Fisting. Helen, have you ever been fisted? Never, no. So why are you recommending it? Someone should be. I think Helen's saying, <laughs> if 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 not me, who and and, not, and it should be. Elle. If not now, you, <laughs> it's like the same mind. It's yeah, like this, it's yeah. frightening. It's frightening. Okay, my other thought was okay. Um, that I, as a person who's recently been getting very drunk with a new person, I don't know that at four a.m. very drunk good conversations happen. Actually, I think I think beyond two, people should probably be asleep. I don't know that people do their best. Um, Not their best, but they you don't. But they do it, but it gets done. Out. Yeah, Honestly, I don't know I'd that rather it's good do, I'd rather get wasted and chat with a stranger at five a.m. because I think I have more rev- revelations during that than I do during like paid therapy sessions. Sometimes. So you're saying Elle's yeah. partner should get drunk with a stranger and talk about their no with trauma. Elle. With oh, Elle. with Elle. Okay. You together. think they're basically strangers to each other? Yikes! I, yeah, but no, no, just for the emotional <laughs> intimacy. For the emotional intimacy. Listen, Trick I, him into what doing I would it. say is probably go back, rewind, listen to Charlie Clive's advice and then maybe just ignore Helen and I. I don't think we're very good at this. I think we crushed it. You think you crushed it? <laughs> I think there's a, I think you could do one week of each, maybe one week of Helen's advice, one week of Catherine's advice, one week of Charlie's advice. I would try Charlie's at the end. I think it's the best one. Yeah. But save the best of last sort of thing. Save the best yeah. of last when you've absolutely thing. ruined yourselves with yeah. the with <laughs> the three <laughs> nights a week fisting. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Emotionally ruined and like yeah. bum holders hanging out on the ground bum like hole. Do you not fist up the ass? No, you fist in the vagina. In a lesbian relationship, <laughs> you can do either. But I'd, I'd say you'd, if you're if you're starting entry level with a person who doesn't like intimacy, I don't think you start at the butthole. I don't think that the I don't think that it's like the the Elle's partner is like it. I think if they're struggling with intimacy, I don't think like lead with fisting that leads to your ass falling you out. Did a, a bum hole when they had worms, you just came up with a fistful of worms. Like maybe like, that's how you get rid of them quickly. That's how you get rid of them so fast. Could be, could be. That's you're both episode profoundly of fistful of worms. Just, <laughs> you're both disgusting. Thank uh, you so much thank for you listening. Elle. Thank, thank you. Thank you for Charlie for coming on. Thank Charlie you. Clive. Wait a second, Charlie Clive. Where can we see your show yes. and how do we book it? Uh, Ellen and I, who are Brittany, are doing our show Friends and Nothing More at the Soho Theatre from the 12th of December to the 22nd of December and tickets are now on sale. Please come and see us. And they can get them on the Soho Theatre website. Can they also get them in your bio on Twitter? Yes. So Soho Theatre website, bio on Twitter, bio on Instagram. Where, what, what's, your, what's your handle? Um, okay, great question. So our, um, our 
Twitter is at Britney Comedy mm -hmm. and Ellen is too cool for Instagram. So it's just me and I'm at Charlie Clive. Great. So and there, but there's just bios aplenty. So great. It's great. So it's if great. anybody was just listening to this episode because they want to know what the person I'm dating looks like, sorry, she's not on Instagram. You're gonna have to go to the show at Soho Theater. That's exactly that's it. Really that's exactly it. the way it is. Sorry yeah. that, but that's, you're gonna Please. have to go. Sorry. And which room are you in in Soho Theater? We are upstairs. Gorgeous. What a room for yeah. comedy. So good. Oh my gosh, Charlie Clive. What a wonderful guest. Everybody, give a round of applause for Charlie Clive. Thank you, Charlie Clive. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Charlie yes. Clive. Are you patting yourself on the back? Yeah, I'm booking my ticket now. Oh. oh. Well done. Thank you so much to our executive producers, Guy Goodman, Simon Morse, Mary Fox, Annie Thomas, Sarah Harkey Deacon, and Oliver Jago. What's up, guys? And to our amazing producers, Richard Picknell, Elle, Richard Bold, Neil Redman, Victoria Hutchison, Emma Walton. I really feel that like spit in my mouth. Um, Karen and David Bull, Howard Van Dyke, Eddie Doyle, Tim and Dom, David Walker, Rachel R, Anthony Conway. It's like it's in the pipe at the top of it. Just read the name. Sadie Cashmore, Claire Owen Jones, Jess and Nick, Zoe, Joe Holmes, Sarah, Molly, Hattie, Helen, Alex Stop. Pugh, Josie W, Amy, Raya Fink, Cordelia, Rachel, Cordelia, holy shit, Rachel Page, Helen A, Tina Lindsay, Sophie Shivers, Graham Marsh, Emily G, and Amy O'Riordan, Abby Wharf. Um, I will say this, I would like another patron called Cordelia. I really like that. More Cordelia's the better. More Cordelia's would be incredible. Thank you all so much. Oh, and a, and a Cleopatra. Mm. That's a fun one, isn't that an it? option? If you're out there and you're called Cleopatra, please join us as a patron. Thank you. <laughs>